This is the Rexing V1 dash camera with 2.4 inch LCD screen. It's capable of 1080p full HD recording, has motion detection and parking monitor. These are the required micro SD cards. I chose to get two of them, 32 gigs each. This is the Spytek dash camera hardwire kit, mini USB cable. Uh, it was nine bucks on Amazon. You'll need this to allow you to connect the dash camera to achieve 24 hours uninterrupted power supply for car parking surveillance. This is actually a ATA circuit. I grabbed the wrong one. This is a full size. You'll need the mini ATA circuit and also mini fuse kit. I'll explain later why you'll need the extra fuse kit. And now the open box. We have the camera, the user manual, the 3M sticky pad and mounting plate for the back of the camera that applies to the window, the USB cable for the desktop connection, and the car charger, which I will not be using. Here is the camera with the 2.4 inch LCD screen. It's full 1080p recording, an internal battery capable of recharging, and an, a microphone as well for audio recording inside the cab. My main interests are the motion detection and parking monitor capabilities, which you will need to uh, download and install the firmware uh, at rexing.usa or rexingusa.com and then you'll be able to use those. Inside the cab you'll find the fuse box is right on the driver's side right there there's a little tab you can just push and it'll pop right off literally I will be using the front seat motor which is 30 amp you'll see right on the bottom just above the door P it's 30 amp front seat FR I chose to use that one so here is the Adafuse the mini Adafuse that I bought at O'Reilly's for about seven bucks it's cheaper on Amazon but I didn't order it on Amazon at the time there you go Here is the cable, the dash camera hardwire kit. Takes the volts down, I believe, from 12 to 5. Here is the ground wire and the wire you'll need to put into the Adafuse. So I just balled it up and stuck it in there. Make sure it's nice and kind of snug, I guess. And you'll take your crimp tool and just give it a good crimping. Make sure it's nice and tight. Once you crimp it, you can wrap it with some electrical tape. Now here is where I figured that the uh, fuses inside are not the ones that go inside here. The prongs are way too short. Those are the ones that come inside the Forerunner. So I actually had to buy the extra kit to get full size prongs for the fuses, not those little tiny ones. So I used a 30 amp for the seat, just like I had, and then a 5 amp for the camera. And that's where you want to apply the ground, is right on that screw right there, that it's attached to the fuse box. Just unscrew it a little bit, not all the way, you just unscrew it enough, you can slide that prong right in the back of it, and then you just screw it back on, tighten it. I just used a multi-tool since I don't have a ratchet set at this moment. So you just pop that in there. Being that that's so huge you will not be able to get that cover plate back on. You want to clean your window wherever you're going to mount it. I use invisible glass and some shop towels. You'll put the 3M onto the mounting plate and then take the other sticker off and then apply it to the window. 
Well, make sure you line up the correct orientation. And here's where my camera bugged out. So you'll want to leave enough wire so that it reaches the headliner from down to the headliner down to your camera right there. You'll tuck it in all the way on the all the way to the end where the pillar meets right there. See, it's all nice and tucked away. And you'll tuck it all the way in down to that pillar, like I said. And then tuck it in right there. I just use a old credit card that I don't need anymore that is pretty much garbage. I also use a butter knife right here to uh, kind of help a little bit because it was really tight. Just for a few seconds. Then I go back to the credit card. And then it got easy from there. And then there's that black seal that you'll just tuck it in on the side there. I'm gonna switch angles here in a second. It's actually a perfect spot for it, right there. And you'll just use the card to feed it through all the way. See, I kind of easily tucking it in right there. Until you get to the bottom right there and then it just tucks right in and goes under the dash. So here it is all lined up and uh, tucked away and the pillar there and the headliner all the way over to the mirror comes down across the side there plugs into the unit and you'll just tidy this up I just use one zip tie tighten it up and then just stuck it right right behind there there's a perfect little nook right there so you can just pop it all in there I didn't tight I didn't do too crazy I didn't know if I'd need to re redo anything so I left it there looks like it's nice and snug and cool here I show you how easy it is to unplug it and also dismount it and at that time the battery is now powering it so you could actually just take it with you for any situation if you want to keep recording outside of your car. I made this video to help others like myself who have a forerunner and would like a dash camera but don't necessarily know the ins and outs of automotive electronics. I uh, hope this helps you. If you have any questions, I'll be glad to help. Uh, please like and subscribe and check us out at our website. Thank you.